Hello, and welcome to a lecture on quantization noise and other ADC impairments. I'm Steve Ellingson. Here's an overview of this lecture. First, we'll define quantization noise and how it affects dynamic range. We'll discuss characteristics of practical analog to digital converters. We'll talk about effective number of bits, commonly abbreviated ENOB or ENOB. We'll talk about aperture uncertainty. And then we'll do an example of characterization of practical ADCs. So first, quantization noise. The Nyquist criterion allows perfect reconstruction for a finite sample rate, but only if the sample values are perfect. Quantization means that the sample values will not be perfect. One way we can analyze this is using the following equation, in which x of t is the input to the analog to digital converter, and which is continuously varying. x sub q is the output of the ADC. In other words, a time, in other words, a discrete time output and one which has been truncated to the nearest level, i.e. quantized, and which is fixed over the sample period. And then the remaining term, epsilon, represents the difference between those two quantities. And therefore, this is the quantization error, which can be interpreted as noise. A relevant description of the effect of quantization error, or quantization noise, is quantization signal-to-noise ratio or QSNR. This is the ratio of the power in the original signal to the quantization noise power. So now we would like to develop a simple expression for this. A simple expression is possible if we assume a few things. First, we assume that the input is uniformly distributed over all possible quantization levels. So if we have these quantization levels, then we assume that the signal is distributed over all those possible values and is not just limited to a few of those values. We assume that the input is uniformly distributed within each quantization subrange. So in other words, we spend about the same amount of time here as we do in this subrange as we do in this subrange. So the signal statistics in each subrange are the same. So an example that we can use to develop an expression is full-scale periodic signals such as sinusoids, which is essentially what I've drawn here. In that case, we can compute the quantization noise power. And remember, power is just the time average, that's what these brackets are, of the square of the magnitude of the quantity. So that's an expression of power. So here is my error and I simply square it and integrate over the subrange and here's one subrange x sub p is the magnitude of the sinusoid so if that occurs over l subranges then each subrange is xp divided by l so the simple integral by virtue of the fact that epsilon is uniformly distributed over the subrange turns out to be x sub p, the magnitude of the sinusoid, squared, divided by 3 times the number of subranges squared. And this is the error power in any subrange, and thus the quantization noise power. Now for the signal part, well that's just the average of x squared, the time average of x squared, which is simply for a sinusoid, just the magnitude of the sinusoid squared divided by 2. So now we have everything we need. The ratio of the signal noise power to the quantization noise power is simply 3L squared divided by 2, simply taking the ratio of those two expressions that we previously obtained. And then we note that L is simply 2 raised to the power N sub B. Right? This is the same expression as follows. N sub B is log base 2 of L. So we make that substitution and then we work through some uh, factors here and we obtain 3 times 2 raised to the 2 times the number of bits. 
all over 2. In dB, that is simply taking 10 times log base 10 of the quantity, we obtain 10 log base 10 of 3 halves times 20 times the number of bits times log base 10 of 2. And this quantity I can compute. That's simply 1.76. And this quantity, 20 times log base 10 of 2, I can compute. That's simply 6.02. So I find that under the assumptions I've made, the quantization signal -to noise ratio is 1.76 plus 6.02 times the number of bits in dB. Now this is for an ideal analog to digital converter digitizing a single tone with magnitude such that the tone fills the maximum encodable range. Because this expresses the noise resulting from the largest encodable signal, quantization signal noise ratio is sometimes called quantization dynamic range, or just the dynamic range of the ADC. Practical ADCs are usually worse by a few dB, so it's common to say that the quantization signal noise ratio is 6 dB per bit, right? That's simply ignoring this 1.76. Okay, you'll note from the analysis we just did that we did not find anything about the spectrum of the quantization noise. We have no reason to expect the quantization noise should be spectrally white or that it should be spectrally noise-like. If this is true for sinusoids, it's certainly going to be true for narrowband communication signals, which at sufficiently high sample rates are not that much different from sinusoids. Now, on the other hand, if we digitize noise-like signals, signals which have spectrum, perhaps which looks like noise, then the quantization would be spectrally white. Most communications in the modern era are an intermediate case. They're perhaps not well represented as sinusoids, perhaps not well represented as being broadband noise. They're somewhere in the middle. So the quantization noise spectrum is a little bit hard to anticipate. Dithering is a scheme which is used to level out the spectrum of the quantization noise. And this entails adding out-of-band noise to whiten the quantization noise spectrum. This reduces the quantization-related spurious signal levels by keeping quantization noise from clumping at certain frequencies. And there are several examples of how dithering is done in the textbook, and uh, I encourage you to take a look at those. Characteristics of practical analog-to-digital converters. First, one finds that most practical ADCs available encode full scale at about one volt peak to peak. Now that's not exact for any given ADC. Some encode at half a volt peak to peak, some encode at two volts peak to peak, but roughly speaking, it's on the order of one volt peak to peak. You can get some hints as to why this turns out to be the case by looking at the previous lecture on analog to digital conversion. But for our purposes, I'll simply say that it turns out that most practical ADCs encode full scale at about one volt peak to peak. Most A to Ds are designed to have differential input with an impedance of about 100 ohms. And that's because we desire good second order linearity. And that's because if we have to operate in the first Nyquist zone, the second order harmonics will likely also end up in the first Nyquist zone. And even if they don't, they will end up in the second Nyquist zone and we'll have to deal with them as alias signals. Now, if you look at these two properties, you can quickly work out the full scale power that is the power of a signal which produces full scale output on the ADD is typically about plus 10 dBm. Sample rates for practical ADCs go anywhere from hundreds of samples per second up into the giga sample per second range, billions of samples per second. The limitation, as I probably explained in a previous lecture, is due to the bandwidth of sample and hold mechanisms. The ADCs used in communications receivers are typically in the range of about 1 to 100 mega samples per second these days. And they have analog bandwidth, which is much greater, typically up to hundreds of megahertz. And this is to allow undersampling. 
Modern ADCs have numbers of bits up to about 16 or so. This is limited primarily by quantizer linearity. I probably discussed that in a previous lecture. An increasing number of bits eventually leads to quantizer generated spurious that overcomes the improvement that you would gain in quantization signal noise ratio. So there's a trade-off here. You can improve the quantization signal noise ratio by increasing the number of bits, but at the same time, the nonlinearities associated with the increased numbers of quantization intervals results in spurious, which can offset the benefit that you gain in quantization signal to noise ratio. Effective number of bits is a parameter which is used to describe practical ADCs. It's a measure of the total impairment, accounting for quantization noise, internal analog noise, quantizer nonlinearity, and possibly also aperture uncertainty. I'll say more about aperture uncertainty in a moment. ENOB, as is often pronounced, is defined as the number of bits for an ideal ADC that yields irreducible quantization noise power equal to the total undesired power from the subject analog to digital converter. So it's a way of representing all the impairment including things other than quantization noise and representing those things as if they were quantization noise. For most practical ADCs, ENOB is lower than the number of bits by about 0.5 to 2 bits. So that's a way of saying that most practical ADCs lose this amount of dynamic range due to factors other than quantization noise, ideal quantization noise. Aperture uncertainty given many different symbols, but a common one is sigma sub tau. This is the standard deviation, or equivalently the root mean square, of the error in the sampling timing. It's also known as aperture jitter or timing jitter. Sample timing error contributes noise in a manner similar to quantization noise. For a sinusoidal signal, the resulting signal noise ratio can be worked out uh, we're not going to do it here, but I'll give you the expression. The signal noise ratio associated with aperture uncertainty, in other words, this jittering around of the sampling time, is 1 over the square of 2 pi times the sample rate times this aperture uncertainty parameter, sigma sub tau. Note that doubling the sample rate reduces the signal noise ratio by a factor of 4. So this can be a big deal. If you go from 10 mega samples per second to 20 mega samples per second, that means the signal noise ratio associated with this uncertainty is getting worse by 6 dB. So in modern communication systems, we are frequently in the position where we have to consider how accurate the sample clock is, and then subsequently how accurately the ADD can take that sample clock and sample at exactly the right time. Timing error in the sample clock applied to an otherwise ideal ADC has the same effect, thus a requirement on the clock generator as well. So A to Ds will have an aperture uncertainty associated with them, but all that says is how uncertain the A to D is for a perfect clock. If you have a clock which itself has some error in it or some timing jitter, then that may dominate instead. In any event, the A to D certainly can't do any better than what would be suggested by its own internal aperture uncertainty. So an example here to see how these parameters play out, uh, I'll do a, a particular device here. It's by a company uh, known as Analog Devices, Analog Devices Incorporated, and it's their model number AD9432. It's a commercially available 12-bit analog to digital converter. That is, N sub B is 12. If you look at the data sheet, it'll say that when it's sampling a 10 megahertz tone using a sample rate F sub S of 105 mega samples per second, the effective number of bits is 11.0. So that's the ENOB. By the way, note ENOB can be a fractional number because it's not an actual number of bits. The aperture jitter of this particular device is 0.25 picoseconds RMS. So root mean square aperture jitter is 0.25 picoseconds. So my questions here are, 
what is the expected signal to noise ratio? How does this compare to the signal to noise ratio of an ideal 12 bit ADC? And then how does this compare to the signal to noise ratio associated with the aperture uncertainty alone? Well, let's work it out. What is the expected signal to noise ratio? Well, we're told that the E knob is 11.0. That says that the quantization signal to noise ratio, at least uh, if we interpret the noise as being everything and not just quantization noise, is given by the expression 1.76 times 6.02 times 11 in dB. And we do the math there, we get 68.0 dB. So this would be the expected signal to noise ratio for a full scale signal. How does this compare to the signal to noise ratio of an ideal 12 bit ADC? Well, the effective number of bits for an ideal 12 bit ADC is 12 bits. So if I work this calculation again, I get 74.0 dB. How does this compare to the signal to noise ratio associated with the aperture uncertainty alone? Well, here's the relevant expression, and I get 75.6 dB using 0.25 picoseconds as the aperture jitter. And that gives me 75.6 dB. So as long as the sample clock exhibits jitter much less than the aperture uncertainty of this device, then the effective signal noise ratio will not be if limited by the aperture uncertainty. This concludes this lecture on quantization noise and other ADC impairments.